You know, the, for us, the big um, event was they held this meeting. Uh, Larry Culp had been um, CEO for five and a half months, and this was his first opportunity to get in front of investors and set goals that he could be held accountable to. So having this call was important, setting the targets was important, and uh, there was enough underlying positives that we think uh, continue to fuel the bull case. What, what were the positives? And, and, and let me just say, he, he laid out targets that he has to hit, but they're targets that probably aren't going to be really tough to hit for another year and a half or so before you really start to see what's happening in 2020 because they basically said forget about 2019 it's not happening this time yeah just to be very clear this is a longer turnaround process and uh, 2019 looks like it'll be the trough uh, if you want to pick out some positives one of them was that the cash flow free cash flow for 2019 was not as bad as what everyone feared we had down two billion and they gave a range of two billion to zero so that right out of the blocks there was a bit of a relief uh, yesterday morning um, I would assume you have to be patient if you're going to be an investor who jumps into this right now yeah, absolutely patient but for us uh, the uh, story changed dramatically when Larry Culp stepped into the role. Uh, if you were going to guide a company of this size and this complexity, you're making an enormous bet on leadership. And we've had experience with Larry. We covered uh, Danaher for 15 years. Mm -hmm. He's the right person. So, so, Dean, it seems to me that Larry is, is finally getting his sea legs at this point. And it, but, it, but is he, by the say, I'm, I'm a, a shareholder in GE. Is, is the, are we looking at a double? from here because it, you know we were thinking about a zero and people were factoring in GE was going to be non-existent so that to me has tremendous upside so what are you thinking about so the bounces off the bottom can you can start making a pretty aggressive bull case here and I have heard numbers uh, like uh, twenty dollars in twenty twenties right yeah you know, along those those sound catchy we're taking a more measured approach on a sum of the parts, uh, looking uh, at what each one of the underlying businesses, how much they're valued at. Uh, that takes us up to $13. It's still 30% upside from here. So we're going to look this as an incremental positive. To Steve's point, though, it, it has not been long since people were saying this could be going to zero. It could be gone. Is that uh, a possibility off the table at this point? Uh, those were dark days in the fall uh, when you started looking at the liquidity crisis and look at what uh, calls on cash that they had. Uh, and since then, you've had a number of events. The most important of which was the sale of their biopharma business uh, to Danaher, ironically. Uh, that brings in $20 billion of cash. And that day, you saw the bonds rally and that liquidity crisis uh, taken off the table. You said going into this that you really wanted to hear more details. Aside from the free cash flow, did you get the details you were hoping for? So one of the disappointments were there were not more details around cash flow uh, projections. Uh, you, you know, the whole walk from uh, 2018 free cash flow to 2019 free cash flow, you knew what the big buckets are, but you didn't get uh, precise denominations. So we're still, uh, there's not a lot of calibration here. Uh, this will be something we'll all be watching very carefully. But uh, for starters, this is a cash, free cash flow recovery story in our minds.